lot of other things that we've had to see from Jerry, we have not really had to see that from Jamal because a lot of times Jamal just starts people and knock them out fast. First off, like this video and subscribe. Now we're going to take a look at the main event, the reason we are here. They scheduled this fight the same day as Jan versus Magomed. Oh, they scheduled this before the decision was called. Like, they was like, yeah, whoever. It don't even matter who wins at this point. We... <laughs> whoever wins got to fight Jamal Hill. That what's, way he can knock you out. Hey, what's interesting is Anthony Smith is training with Jamal to fight Glover. But Anthony can't be Glover. And Anthony... What can Anthony imitate the Glover? What can he imitate? Nothing. Nothing. Because even a double leg takedown, man, only Glover can do that. Yeah. Unless they go in and bring in, I don't know, man. The only thing that Anthony can really imitate is the the ending sequence for like rear naked choke defense. Th does that make sense? Because because uh, Anthony can do that, but as far as everything that leads up to that, the striking is different, the entries are different, the wrestling is different. Yeah. The entire fight style. The only thing he can help you with is how to defend a rear naked choke. Jerry is win and if Glover get you I think down. Jerry was better back. off bringing in like a DC or somebody, man. Cause I, I can't think of nobody else really like on this planet who can imitate Glover like that other than DC. A big strong wrestler yeah. with knockout power. But I mean, and they bring the Anthony Smith taller, longer, fight completely different. It's like, man, what in the those knees and elbows? That's not gonna help you. Against man, you Glover. know what's odd, man? And and look, I know because Glover has been a former champion. But look at this. According to Topology, sixty-one percent of people think Glover's gonna win, which I understand. He's a former champion. I thought it'd be higher than that, to be honest. I thought it'd be like eighty percent. You know, Jamal Hill and Jerry have a few things in common. And that's mostly like heart determination. No, because in Jamal's last fight against Tiago, where he showed a bunch of heart, man, because a lot of those punches would have knocked out a whole bunch of people. Yeah, but the thing is, Jerry's grappling defense is better. Too. But but that's what I was about to say. Jerry, a lot of other things that we've had to see from Jerry, we have not really had to see that from Jamal because a lot of times Jamal just starts people and and knock them out fast. Like, if we just being real, and that's we haven't kinda, really had to see a whole lot from Jamal. And that's what I'm worried about, because I can see Jamal hurting Glover, but then get put on his butt. Well, get put on his back. But that's why I really enjoyed the Thiago Santos fight, because he did get taken down, and he never gave up position. Like, he always stood up. He never let Thiago run away with anything. And it was good, because the Glover take people down and end up straight and they pull him out. I know, but this is one thing that people are forgetting. Glover has been flash knocked out by people who fight just like Jamal Hill. If you go yeah, back the and lovers, look, the, uh, uh, when Alexander just beat him up for five rounds, essentially, uh, you mentioned Anthony Johnson already. Right, he only got beat like that by those two people. And I, and I was thinking, well, even in the Jerry fight, Jerry was piecing him up, but Jerry never was like, he had him super, super hurt on the feet. Man, look, Jamal Hill gonna have to dig real deep in this fight because Glover, he got kind of, I think Glover got exposed in the Anthony Johnson fight, man. If you go back and watch, a lot happened. Cause Anthony, all he did was he avoided the big shots and he did a bunch of feints. Dude, and then- fight, That fight lasted 13 seconds. Yeah, he did a bunch, a lot happened. Was like I watched the fight recently and he just did a bunch of feints, man. And then he was able to catch him cause Glover ducks a lot. But the thing is, Jamal Hill is a southpaw, man. But dang, I don't know if he gonna be able to land it but if he could throw like a one-two, well not not a one-two, but throw a jab in the in the uh, left uppercut. If he could throw a jab in the left uppercut, man, that's how you get the job done and against Glover. Get hit with an overhand right hand. That's and all take he down. can do against Glover. He takes straight punches. Actually, extremely good, Glover. Because you know what's so odd? Uh, for some reason, the Rumble Johnson and the Alexander Gustafson knockout. It's it's almost like it's a cloud over him. But they've been the only two people who can do that. And Alexander did it for him, what, for four rounds? Yeah. It took four rounds to finish him. Well, one thing we know is Glover don't seem to do well when they fighting somewhere else that's not Las Vegas. Because he got uh -huh. beat up bad when he fought overseas against Alex. He got beat up bad. Well, he was all about to win, but he got finished against Jerry. Mm -hmm. But now Brazil is, is his home country. So yeah. surely he should be comfortable there, right? Yeah. Man, for Glover to win... Take down and at, I mean it's, it's it's hard to get that man off you man he submitted Yon see that's why I was saying Jamal Hill game plan has to be finished Glover fast that's it just think it. about it man kind of like what Anthony Justin did because I 
I don't think Jamal Hill has a big chance to win. Well, he has a big chance, but probability wise, I don't think that he don't have a high, what's it called? Well, basically you're saying that as the fight goes on, it decreases his chance of winning. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, I don't think he has a high chance of winning this fight. If you just think about, because Glover is a former champion, he's a wrestler, most people can't stuff his takedowns, he has a great chin. Jamal Hill, he, well, yeah, what you're saying is right too, but also he has, to win this fight, he has to just get it done fast like he did against Jimmy Crew. He like, has to be one of those type of fights, man. Oftentimes, his fights do end like that. That's the thing. Like, yeah, a true. lot of his fights do end with flash knockouts. Can Tiago you? Santos dropped Glover several times before before he was able to, uh, before he lost. Yeah. And Jamal Hill, at this point, if he hits you like that and catch you, that fight, that fight is over. I know this is gonna be a, a. I disagree with that, man. I, I get what you're saying. I agree partially, but I think that's one of the best Tiago Santos we've seen in a long time, and he still couldn't get the job done. Because I see it depends on how you look at it. I think, if you look I at think it, that's one of the worst Tiago we've think, seen in a long time. It depends on how you look at it, because you look at it from the perspective of Tiago looked good, in my opinion. That was his last good performance, and the fact that he gave Glover everything but the kitchen sink and it wasn't enough. If you look at it from that point of view, but, bro, but you like, gotta realize Tiago Tento, that was his first fight back from, from, knee from his two ACL surgeries. So there was not a bunch he could, like he, well, yeah. he only had a small window of victory just off of that alone because they you say, don't know, you gotta start kicking again. They say, he didn't, train, they say he didn't train his wrestling, none. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, how you gonna defend takedowns and your your ACL and yeah. stuff? You coming off surgery. You're re injured trying to train wrestling. Yeah, trying to defend a takedown against Glover takes It's just too dangerous. It just man. shows you it takes a lot to finish Glover. That's just what that fight shows. Oh, 100%. You that. Yeah, uh, man, Glover, and realistically, man, he dropped the ball in the jury fight, man, because he was yeah. about 30 seconds away from winning that decision. Oh, no, man. That fight was weird. It was going back and forth, man. It was just. They both yeah. had their moments because you gotta understand, Jerry was putting hands on him too. I know they did have their moments, but there was this the thing Jerry was putting hands on Glover, but the times where Glover put hands on Jerry, he was about to knock Jerry out several times. Like Jerry was skating. So that's another thing is Glover has to be very, very careful because you gotta realize, J uh, you gotta realize Glover been dropped and hurt in a lot of these fights. Did, did Yon ever get anything going against him? I don't think Yon did anything. Uh, yeah, he could have stayed on that night, man. But, uh, the thing is, when I'm, when I'm saying this fight in my head, I'm just seeing Glover throwing these looping punches. You don't do that against Jamal Hill. He ain't the guy to do that to, man. But the thing is, I think because Jamal has a high guard, I think he's susceptible to the takedowns. Yes. You know, you got to kind of put your hands down and stuff. Takedowns, Jamal Hill don't do that. Jamal Hill keep his hands up high because he ain't trying to get hit. But I'm going to tell you something else, and we mentioned this. People look at Jamal Hill as a knockout guy, but a lot of his knockouts, it's because of speed and accuracy. It's not like Anthony Johnson, just power, power. Jamal Hill catches people. I, I'm, I'm saying, but speed is power. Yeah. Speed is power. And I think that people don't realize how deceptively fast Jamal's hands are. But another thing is Jamal, if you go back and look at his fights, a lot of his knockouts happen because he knocks people out with his lead. Oh, the right hook? His lead right hook. Or like a jab almost. Mm. So it's like before, you, you got to close the distance, but his knockout punch that that he wins a lot of his fights off of is the lead hand. And then by the time you get, if you can get past that, now you still got to deal with the left hand. But then once you get past that, one thing that he has really good that people don't talk about, well, two things, elbows and knees. When he get people in the clinch, man, it just destroys people, man. If he could throw a knee if he want to against Bluff, man, he's going to be on his back. Yeah, but if he hurt, though, man. Hey, you want to tell you what Jamal Hill has to do? I'm going to tell you what, what Glover does that nobody talks about. Does he's more dangerous when he's hurt. So it's like what Jamal Hill need to do, he need to hurt him and then take a step back. It, it, it sounds kind of counterproductive. It sounds weird. Remember Ryan did... Bader and Glo Glover? Remember Ryan Bader and Glover take Sarah fight? When yeah. Ryan hurt him and then the moment he went in to finish him, knocked not, out. Not, I ain't talking about the punches, but the, you got to be worried about that too. But I'm talking about the takedowns. Yes. I'm saying because we see people hurt Glover and I guess it makes him stronger and he get he shoots and he almost, he gets almost all those takedowns when he hurt. The, Jamal Hill has to hurt him and then kind of stay, take a step back and then kind of, he, he might have to flash knock know, him out. You know who that sounds like? Like if you can't get the flash knockout, but you know what game plan you described it? Alexander Gustafson. Remember how he beat him oh. up and then he, he beat him up and then nope. Yeah. And then he, he was running, running, don't get me wrong, but like he would circle off 
I'm not about to let you just start wrestling me because I know that's when your takedowns are the strongest is when you hurt because in the back of your mind, you know, I got to get this takedown because I might get knocked out. So, and also, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I don't know if it's father time catching up the glove. Glover didn't look too good in his last fight. I hate to say this, man. He didn't look like he normally does. That Glover that fought Jan Blackowitz, Glover in his last fight against Jerry, he looked kind of old. He looked a little bit old and look kind of old, man. Because he, he didn't look, he didn't, didn't look, look like he beat Jerry down too, man. They saying normally, but down. normally we see Glover and get a full amount to fight be over. I don't know, Jerry different though. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry's saying, a different dude, man. But I was saying, because when have we seen Glove in the third and fourth round? But, but I'm going to be real with you. you. Jerry would have knocked anybody else out. You heard what I said? Hmm? I said, when have we seen Glover in the third and fourth round? I know, but this is what I'm saying. Jerry would have knocked out anybody else. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying Jamal Hill might do better in the later round. Because when he fought Tiago Santos, he got stronger. So I'm saying if if some kind of way, dang, I just kind of I just contradicted myself, man. What do you do if you Jamal Hill? Do you come out aggressive and try to get a fast stoppage? Because I don't think Glover after one or two rounds, I don't think the chances of him getting the finish kind of decrease. Oh no, he looked like he was getting better as the Jerry fight went on though. Because remember he started taking him down and uh, going for submissions. Hey, hey, nobody talks about this, bro. When he took Jerry down and got got him in the arm triangle in some kind of way, and Jerry ended up on top and he would finish a lot of guys with the arm triangle. No. And and that's another thing that, you gotta realize. Uh, also, Jamal gotta watch out for all these different types of submissions, man. It ain't just a red naked choke. It's the glove is very sneaky. And that's a strong man to have on top of you, man. Yeah. Uh, with that black belt, with that wrestling, that ain't a place you want to be. And I know he was able to get up against Thiago Santos, yeah. but Glover see, is a completely different world. See, my heart want Jamal Hill to win, but my mind is saying Glover gonna win this one. See, my heart really want both. I like both of these dudes, man, because I wanted Glover to get his. How old is Ain't Glover like 45 now? Nah, that man, he's 43, man. Don't put the extra two years on him like that, but. How tall is Jamal here? 6'3", 6'4"? What's his reach? Hold on. All that matters. <laughs> All this going uh, right. I'm finna go to the UFC website and see if I can. So Jamal reach Hill is reaching 79 compared to Glover 76. That three inches make a difference with Jamal Hill. And then Jamal Hill 6'4". Cause the way Jamal Hill fights, bro, he can slip and let me look at some stats here. Let's yeah. look. Let's look at the UFC stats and see. Oh my God! Look at Jamal Hill. Look at his stats, bro. For what you? This what is his you, strikes. Oh, I'm on UFCStats.com. Dude, he got 64 percent of his wins by. Now this is gonna be a difference. He can't. He basically can't get taken down. You need to be getting up immediately. You do not want Glover on your back at all. Cause this right here, this is how Glover gonna win. If he, if Glover gonna win, this is how. You're not finna win no belt in no Brazil against no Glover Teixeira. You can get that out of your Yeah, I think it's, Jamal Hill might have a chance to win this fight. And he's gonna go for it. And look at his average fight time, you seven minutes. Cause these guys, even even when Thiago Santos hurt him, it seems like he really didn't go for it. Which I know he it was his he first time fight. Yeah, he could, but it's his first fight in a long time. But I think if Jamal Hill, if he could gas out, if Jamal Hill make it to the fourth round and he could take it down and get submitted, he gonna at least have went for it for the first three well, rounds. Another thing, this fight was made a month ago. So it ain't like that's why I was thinking about two cardio man. Who had oh no, advantage? but Glover was remember Glover was training for a fight against Jerry oh, before he got man, he had a cardio advantage. No, but Jamal Hill was training for Anthony Smith too for this oh, fight card. So okay. cardio should be good actually yeah. for both of them. But I'm looking at UFCstats.com and say Jamal Hill, he lands six point four six point four six significant strike per minute and he only absorbs three point five one. And he look, he averaging one knockdown per fifteen minutes. He's not getting hit at all, man. Well, he's getting hit though, but I'm saying. Look, look at this. Defense. Now, this is the grappling. What about the knockdown? Does it have a knock, the knockdown uh, ratios on there? He ain't getting touched, let alone knock down. Uh, this is the takedown defense. Okay. Dude, the way he fought Tiago, they, they was both. He met Tiago in the middle, dude. Who does that? Uh, Glover, everybody, that. everybody who ever beat Tiago, they fought the exact opposite way than what Jamal Hill did. And I'm talking about historically. Uh, the only person who able, who was able to do that and walk him down was like Gegard. Am I tripping? I think, and Gegard. I think Gegard. I think one of them took that fight on short notice or something. No, Gegard kept taking him down, and then when he got when uh, when Tiago stood back up, he popped him. You remember? But I'm saying him? didn't one, didn't Tiago take that fight on short notice or something? I don't remember. And I think that Gegard just walked him down just because he knew nah, like I, I don't think that. Happened. No, that was a that was a one of those fighters. Oh, was, I uh, think that might did happen. Yeah, one of those people was uh, Gegard. Uh, Gegard embarrassed a lot of people in the UFC. Yeah, but I'm saying nobody else fought Tiago like that to to win like that. Everybody else had to look at John Jones. You see, that's what I'm saying. Right. No, yeah, I'm saying if Jamal Hill fought, yeah, I was right. If Jamal Hill fought Tiago Santos like that, 
And I think Tiago Santos striking is better than Glover. Way better. So I'm saying, because, dude, I mean, obviously you got to look out for the hooks and stuff. I think Jamal Hill can see those hooks coming from a mile away. The difference is you, you got to be careful because he might be fainting and then go for a takedown. That's the difference is yeah, when you got to worry about takedowns, it automatically, oh, man, we seen Ryan Hall look good on the feet every now and then because you didn't know if he was diving for a takedown, a heel hook or whatever. It just, it opens up to striking. So he definitely got to be worried. But, man, I think that the takedown defense is going to be pretty good. Hey, I think Jamal is different, man. I've been saying that I think Jamal going to become champion, man. And I said this. And the last time that they fought, when he fought Tiago Santos, I did a whole breakdown where I said I could see Jamal Hill become a champion. I don't, the only thing is the footwork, man. Like, he, do we fight Glover, you got to get in and out, man. And Jamal Hill footwork ain't bad, but it ain't Jerry. It yeah, ain't but, but if you ever notice, whenever Jamal Hill knock people out, he always be in the perfect place to where he I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about the takedowns. I'm talking about, like, to avoid the takedowns. I would like to see Jamal get in and out. Yeah. Because that's what that's how Glover sucks. Because if we if you stay in one place then Yeah, Glover sucks people in, bro, because like I don't know if he played possum. I don't know what he does, but when he hurt when yeah. people think he hurt when GSP was on Jerome podcast and he said he got two types of takedowns he do. He got one where he just go for a takedown. He said another a takedown he has when he'll go back and then his opponents will think that he's hurt. And then he'll shoot for a double leg takedown. He said it works almost every time. I think Glover does something similar to that because I don't know if he plays possum or it just his opponents think that he's hurt, and that's when he could do the power double leg takedown. Is that's why I say I would, like, I would like to see Jamal Hill have better footwork to like if he hurt him, he can kind of circle because away. The way Alex fought, Alex was on that bicycle the whole time, man. Glover seemed to be successful to uppercuts, but if, but if he throw uppercut, then that means he will be susceptible to the overhand right of Glover. Man, if you think he think he call it overhand right, man. I don't know, man. If he go in just getting excited, man, a lot can happen. But, look, I'm going with Jamal Hill, but I'm no fool in thinking that Glover couldn't win or nothing like that. Because, hey, like I said, if if Glover was fighting anybody else, I'd be yeah. rooting for Glover right I here. I think, dude, I just, Jamal, it wouldn't be crazy if Jamal hurt him and then Glover would take him down and then Jamal Hill would just pop, just pop right back up, dude. And it's like, because I think the thing is, even with Jerry, it was times when Jerry stood back up after getting taken down. But he didn't really do nothing with it. Doesn't make sense. I know it's a five round fight. If Jamal Hill, say like if he hurts Glover and gets taken down and pop back up, I think he can finish him. One thing I like about Jamal Hill, especially, is that he just finished the job. And a lot of times his knockouts come out of nowhere. It's like a flash knockout. You know what I'm saying? It's just a regular striking exchange. And then all of a sudden his opponent is nowhere near him to hit him. But for some reason, he had the vision to, to put himself in a position to knock his opponent out just without getting touched but this is another thing i often say but i think that jamal hill has a lot of the qualities of uh, anthony johnson and i think he got the, some of the qualities of alexander gustafson yeah. i think the most important question is jamal hill's takedown defense is 65 percent but the thing is i was thinking about this also man like you think his style because he his striking style is to kind of like he's patient like he's aggressive but he's patient at the same time Maybe he can hurt Glover, but be aware enough to avoid the takedown. Cause he's not somebody who's just going in crazy. He's who does that? You have knocker artists and they hurt people, they just go in crazy. Cody Garbrandt. They get taken down at every I ain't talking about I'm talking about somebody who gets taken down. It's like, dang man, you had him hurt. But he's one of the type of guys to where he's looking for the, the right strike, the right uh knockout punch. So like maybe he can hurt Glover, but then be aware enough and be patient enough to avoid the takedown. And if you notice, man, he's very accurate with his strikes. Yeah. And then he'll hurt him with the one punch and he drops him. And then he can just come in and swarm and finish him off with, like how he did Jimmy Crew and uh, Tiago, well, not Tiago Santos, but, uh, well, nah, well J uh, Johnny Walker. Yeah. So it's like he throwing one strike at a time sometimes. That way you're not overextending or putting yourself in a position where you're throwing multiple strikes and now they can duck under and go for a takedown i'm throwing one strike to find this mark and i got my yeah. other hand back here to defend takedowns yeah but the game plan also got to be to land the, uh the left uppercut yeah because yes. even anthony johnson said that after the fight he said i knew i was gonna knock him out with the uppercut i didn't know it was gonna be that fast though because i think anthony thought he was gonna hurt him and glover glover has this thing when he goes straight back against cage i think jamal hill he has to be aware that okay He's still dangerous, and he's still going to shoot for me, even if he's hurt when his back is against the cage. But he has to be aware to at least have an uppercut in his arsenal to where Glover loves to duck. 
and like he can kind of have the Anthony Johnson type of game plan to where, okay, I'm gonna jab, left uppercut, and finish him right then. Yeah. Because you got to, you got to have that uppercut. Because then, now it'll it'll freeze Glover from going for them takedowns. You gotta understand, if somebody throwing an uppercut on you, man. You ain't worried about no takedowns. You trying to not get knocked out. So if he can mix up on Glover, that, that's nothing I know about Glover too. Sometimes he'll try to go for takedowns. So even with Jerry, he'll try to go for it, but Jerry was piecing him up. Hey, one thing that is going to be interesting is how does Jamal Hill handle getting taken down? Because man, we've seen Glover get people down. I'm talking about champions. We've seen him get people down and just do whatever he wants to do. And we talking about them submissions, man. Glover got some grinding power too. The thing is, we ain't seen really Jamal Hill get taken down other than the Tiago fight in like a long time. It's been a long time since we've seen him. I don't him. think we've ever really seen him take Oh, him. we've seen him against Darko. Against who? Against Darko. You remember Darko kept on taking him down? And then, and I think that Hill. was at the end of that fight, though. The fight was already won by him. And he oh, was yeah. just like... Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. remember, he Darko went for a takedown, but that fight was over. I yeah, mean, yeah, in the third round. He had already embarrassed him. I think that was probably one of the only times we've seen him taken down. Paul Craig pulled guard, so that would I'm be honest, this is an opportunity of a lifetime for Jamal Hill. This might not ever happen again. If I'm Jamal Hill, I'm trying to start his dude. Because you gotta understand, in the way the light heavyweight division is, in a year or two, all those other dudes are still low key ahead of him. All these other people are still Yon, Jerry, Rockets, they all ranked ahead of Jamal. He gotta win this fight if he ever gonna fight for the belt again. He got to. And then nothing is that he's manifesting his fight against Jerry. He said it would be an honor to step in the octagon with a warrior like Jerry. You have to win this fight to get to Jerry. I think people are sleeping on Jamal Hill because they don't really see it. But one thing, man, you can you can attest to this. Man, I've always been able to pick out people who is going to fight for the belt. Now, whether they won or not, remember when I first saw Stipe fight, I described to you. I said, bro, it's a heavyweight. I said, man, he moving around. He got good footwork, good head movement, good takedown defense, good hands. Remember I described it to you, and it was Stipe. Uh, Roy McDonald. I, I told you about Roy McDonald. Alexander Gustafsson. Remember, in the beginning, I'm talking about at the beginning of their careers, I was able to look at them and say, this person, if they take the right fights, they could put themselves in a position to fight for the belt. Yeah. Now, whether they win or not, different. But So, I, I always saw this in Jamal Hill, man. So, who's your, uh, so who are you picking? I mean, I love Glover, man. And, and you know, I've been following Glover since WEC. But uh, I got to go with Jamal Hill because he might not ever get another opportunity. Yeah, I'm gonna go I know with, Glover might not either, but Glover already had it, man. I got to go with Jamal because it's like, you got to make history, man. I'm going to say the same thing too, man. I don't know what Jamal Hill game plan should be. Should it be a first round knockout or should he kind of just weather the Glover storm? I don't. Th I think the Glover storm is there for five rounds because you yeah. got to remember, wasn't he out trying to take yeah. Jerry back in the fifth round before that guy reversed and then he got his back taken? So it's like, yeah. but that's my pick, Jamal Hill.